So ACL was really keen to invest in agricultural research in Africa, but we knew we needed to find the sweet spot. We're a small donor um, and we needed to know where the expertise and the comparative advantage that we could bring match the needs of the African countries we wanted to work in. And Plant by Security emerged as that sweet spot after a year of consultation within Africa. And we were told over and over again that biosecurity really posed an obstacle to trade both within African countries but also trade outside of Africa and was really hampering their ability to ensure food security and grow economic development. The Plant Biosecurity CRC was perfectly placed to deliver this project. We have a really strong network of biosecurity professionals right across the country and beyond. And then partnering with CABI on the ground in Africa, they understand the African needs and the professionals, so to combine them with our networks was a really good opportunity to deliver some great capacity building. Throw in the Crawford Fund, who has a long and proud history of capacity building in developing countries. This is a really strong team with really strong outcomes in Africa. So in Australia I got the opportunity of, uh, of visiting uh, uh, very advanced uh, labs where I was exposed to uh, more traditional diagnostic methods as well as uh, modern ones. Yeah, and um, both have their advantages and disadvantages. So uh, during my involvement in this program uh, I've been uh, learning many things with the, our network and the, with the, the program which have been applied in terms of improving the, pest, the fruit fly pest management in Mozambique. I hosted Mabel and Antonia as part of the Senior Fellowships Program. They came to visit us in far north Queensland, learn about the um, response that we've implemented to Panama disease. They were both very aware of the threat that it posed to, to Africa and to their home countries of Mozambique and Zambia. And we did some really positive work with them, learning about what they needed to know, but also um, providing them with some of our experiences so that they could build on that when they went home. Out of those combinations of different techniques that I learned in, in Australia, we were able to make a combination of those techniques in, and they train the farmers how to, to, to use them. Um, although mangoes are um, mostly consumed uh, locally, but we are able even to, to start negotiating with some countries like Saudi Arabia, Oman, to, to export the mangoes because the harvest this year was very good. When we designed the program, networks were really at the forefront of our thinking. We wanted really strong networks in Africa between the 10 countries and we wanted really strong networks back into Australian biosecurity organisations. I think we've achieved that. The communication that now exists amongst those African nations is really going to help them long term with their trade and their biosecurity. It's a really important part of this program that's worked better than we'd hoped. I never used to know some of the NPPO heads from other countries within the partnership. I never used to know some of the colleagues um, in the, who are involved with the plant-based diagnostics, surveillance, some of the key activities that I'm involved in as coming from the National Plant Protection Organization of Zambia. But after the interactions within the partnership, now I know them by name and they are now colleagues and it's so easy for me to approach them whenever I need any information I see a future in this, I mean, network, and it is very bright. Because the thing is, it, uh, it, the network has put us together, and through this network, if at all there will be issues of collaboration, then it won't be a big deal because we know who is who. You see, FAO as the UN agency with the mandate for increased productivity and also ensuring safe trade, the network is extremely important to ensuring that FAO achieves that goal. So in, as a matter of fact, FAO has already started working with uh, some of the fellows in its, uh, in its programs on plant health. It's very important to continue the network because if we stop it now, then it's easier for us to go back to business as usual. But as we continue networking, it's one way of being accountable to one another and also to our investors that do we have an output, do we have impact, and we should be accountable to show positive impact in this network. 
we recognised early on that apart from the technical aspects of plant biosecurity, a lot of the challenges in Africa relate to the lack of profile or the lack of capacity to really advocate um, the, the importance of plant biosecurity in the political arena. So this training helped them a lot with putting their case in a much stronger fashion and learning how to deal with senior government, senior industry and, and politicians to really position plant biosecurity issues in a way that connects easily with the politicians' understanding of food security. During this program is the time we have tried to communicate better to our top policy managers and we managed also to have the Plant Protection and Health Act of 2016 gazetted in this same period. So a lot of knowledge that had been acquired through these regional networking meetings, learning how other colleagues in other countries are doing things helped us even communicate better to our managers to appreciate the challenges that relate to plant health issues. This program is very, very critical because if today we are complaining that uh, we don't trade uh, not much among ourselves, one of the key uh, factors is uh, how we manage, we handle the SPS TBT matters. Because if it isn't well handled, it will result on uh, non-tariff barriers and it will uh, stop trade to move among the countries. So this is why this is one of the key important factors to deal with in the context of trade facilitation. The partnerships and the strength of ownership that has happened in Eastern and Southern Africa for this network has really been outstanding and, and very unexpected. Um, we know that there's a lot of scope for future uh, potential with this network and we're really happy that with FAO and CABI and COMESA that they've come together to support the sustainability of the network into the future. ACR is very pleased to be able to fund a coordinator position to be based in COMESA for the next year. But the other part of this project is this idea of capacity development at an individual an institutional and regional level has been really effective. Uh, we're very excited about what we've learnt from the impact of this type of work um, and we're hoping that it has applications more widely within the African continent but also in other regions such as the Pacific.